Hi, Liv. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm just fine. Good, good, good. <laughs> How could anybody not be fine if you're uh, in the unexpected? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Well, I just want to explain to people um, uh, who's, who are listening and watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we're, of course, we're on Portland Radio Project. Uh, and the video, which we're shooting right now, will be on Oregon Music News mm -hmm. on Monday. So okay. that's good, because they love to see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know where to start. I Googled you the other day, and you were everywhere. Oh, wow. You were just everywhere. I mean, wow. everywhere. There were so many things. Liv Warfield's new album. Liv Warfield's new album. Liv War oh. and, and Jimmy Fallon. You should have seen Jimmy. You know, it was great. You know, yeah. there was a combination here in Portland mm -hmm. that night of high fives, uh -huh. low fives, fist bumps, and tears. Oh, wow. You know that, right? Wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> like, that, that means a lot to me. It's because yeah. it's been a long time long journey a beautiful one and just it's it's crazy just you know what i thought about what's that i don't i, I haven't told you this and this is not something i'm revealing that you haven't said before because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's in our original interview mm -hmm. I thought about you holding the hairbrush and singing Whitney Houston when you were a kid. Oh, <laughs> very true though yeah, right yeah and yeah. i said oh my god <laughs> it's yeah. all come true. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I, I remember writing her fan club and having yeah. her poster on my wall and stuff. And like <laughs> even now, I mean, just thinking about it, just it's kind of surreal, you know. Just it all really happened just yeah. very fast. It's your long, time. But fast. It's your time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you. okay. You know what? A lot of people don't know. It's, that's your Portland band yeah, on the yeah, album. Yeah, it is. And it it's recorded is. here in Corbett, lovely Corbett, Corbett. rural Corbett. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. On an analog board. Yeah. Um, the Red Barn, uh -huh. um, which I found out Aretha and Santana Court recorded on that board, <laughs> so that's amazing. Um, yeah, it was a beautiful process. The process was fast, but it was, it just happened. You know, I always feel like it's just in the timing. The timing was beautiful. Everything was in sequence. It was just right. Everything about that moment felt right and mm -hmm. um, it was just ready to happen. And I'm excited yeah. that it just it flowed. I mean, Marquay Seamster, mm -hmm. um, Tyrone Hendricks, um, Ryan Waters, Chris Turner, Ashley, I mean, and Saida. Yeah. And just I had a wonderful crew that recorded on that. And that's what I wanted to ask you about. Everybody in the world is asking you about Prince. I know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. It's okay. I'm sure you're, you're I mean, not, you're not just you're tired of asking, answering those questions. Absolutely not. No. But we're in Portland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is, these are Portland cats. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And it's great. Yeah, and they're amazing. They're amazing. And it's, the thing is, is just there's so much amazing musicianship around Portland. Yeah. And I'm very glad. I mean, they're, like, they're incredible. And I'm so proud that they were on the record. So proud that they were able to be on Jimmy Fallon, too. Yeah, so yeah. it was a very proud moment for me. And I feel really good about it. Very good. I mean, so. we, we've seen these guys for, for you. We saw them at the Dookie Jam. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Tony Ozzy, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So tell me about Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, it was crazy. Like, it, I... It just went by so fast. I didn't have a moment to really be scared or um, nervous, maybe after the fact. I was just kind of spaced out um, until we started to do Why Do You Lie? Uh, like, I know what the happened. drums hit and I saw all the horn players just go down. I mean, just everything was just in beautiful, just in beautiful form, like all of it. It just, like I said, it went by so fast, and then Jimmy came over, and he shook my hand, and <laughs> I was just like, oh, is this really happening? And I'm so thankful. I'm just so blessed and thankful for that opportunity, and just hopefully more will come, but I just, yeah, it's crazy, Tom. It's crazy. <laughs> it's I'm sitting there going like, he's holding her album cover up yeah. three and four times. Yeah. She's singing with the band between, you know, with each break. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> It's it such was, a blessing. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it really, it really was, yeah. and yeah, I can't get that memory plot it played out of my head for a while. It's going to be a while <laughs> for that. So. Well, but we do have, we obviously do have to mention Prince because Absolutely. he was the executive producer. You told me, you told me something the other day, which was you recorded that here. He wasn't here. No, 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 no. And and he he did give you advice, but yeah, he Prince was very hands on when he needed to be. Mm -hmm. I mean. 
the beautiful part about it, what I love is that he let me show my artistry. Like, he trusted what I came up with. And when I needed to call him, he was always there. He was always available to tell me his suggestions and what he thought. But he was like, live, you know, do you. Just go with it and do what you feel. I mean, he was the first person I reached out to before I even wanted to record this project because I was scared. I was nervous. And, you know, he was just like, write first write, you know, and call on your brothers, which are the MPG horns, uh -huh. and Phil Lasseter and Roy A.G. were the arrangers, the horn arrangers on this project. Like, there's a lot of love in this project, and that's why I feel it so, so much, so much. You know, I, I had to learn a, a very difficult life lesson one time. What's that? Early in my career in TV, mm -hmm. I was doing a documentary on Reverend James Cleveland and his uh, church, oh. right? And it was, mm -hmm. it turned out okay, it wasn't great, because mm -hmm. I, I was very early in my career. My boss said to me, look, you know what? You can write your way out of anything. Hmm. And I think that's true about words and hmm. probably and about music and yeah. lyrics and everything. You yeah. can. You can write your way out of it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever problem you have. Oh, I was writing, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely writing. And then like, with, with this album, see, I've had a lot of these songs for a while, but... I think being around Prince and being around the NPG, like he taught me to be a better writer, a ranger, and then working with him in the studio, it just I kind of gained a little bit more confidence how I wanted the songs to be structured and how it should really feel. I mean, they were good before, and now it just was. Now I see the whole picture. He helped me to paint a picture and to really. Um, bring my story out the way that I, I see it. Like, I'm very inspired by old black exploitation movies like Cleopatra Jones. So uh -huh. I wanted it to feel like if this was, if I was the one writing the musical for this, what would it sound like? What would it go to? <laughs> what would, you know, the music be matched, you know? Uh -huh. So it just, yeah. It, he just was really an inspiration for this project. Huge inspiration. But, but again, we've... We've heard "Why Do You Lie" before, but oh, sure. the thing is, you know, you, you're talking about being scared, mm -hmm. and people who don't know you, but who have seen you perform, mm -hmm. can't believe that, Ugh. because you are on stage, you are totally in control, mm -hmm. you are it, you are you're magnetic. Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever think that you could ever be scared about anything. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm I'm I feel no, but like that's not how you project yourself. Well, because you, ne you never have, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. even way back, mm -hmm. you always had a confidence on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe that's just <laughs> years <laughs> of me hiding it and not letting anybody know that I was singing for so long. And, and yeah. the stage is my comfort. The stage is my home. Yeah. And that's when I'm able to really be me. And when I'm off stage, I'm a totally different person, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm... Just it's totally separate. But when when I hit the stage, it's just kind of like, oh man, it's I don't know, it's euphoria. It's it's I don't know. I completely understand that. I, I always say I never met a mic I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> I well, you know, I I love getting on the microphone. I mean, like I said, it's it's peace for me. Well, you started out doing peace. karaoke here in Portland, didn't oh, you? Oh, I did. Oh man. Ooh. What songs did you do? Oh, really? You're gonna put me on the list? <laughs> um, oh, I did everything. Like, my first song I do remember is Whitney, I'll Always Love You. Ah. And then I used to sing a lot of Shaka Khan. Uh -huh. um, I sing a lot of Etta James. Um, I did a lot of everything. I mean, I used to have, it's so funny, I used to have like a tin can of like all the songs that you would write down on the sheet of paper. Uh -huh. But I would, I didn't want to throw the paper away because I'd be singing the same songs every time I go, like every day. And I would keep it in my can. And I still, I should have brought my can with me. Hey, guess um, what, Liv? What's that? They're going to be singing karaoke to your song. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There's going to be some young girl, oh. some 22-year-old girl like you were then. That's cool. Going up to the karaoke, can, can I sing? Can I sing? Why do you lie? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's flattering. What is that song about? Oh, really? Well, okay, so. The short answer. <laughs> don't, well, name, don't have to name names. Oh, I won't. I won't. Um, there's a lot of names on that list, but. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, this song is a, is, a, is a truth. I mean, a lot of women and men go through the fact of lying about, yeah, you taking money out of my purse. And yeah, me having the last little bit of 
200 I, 200 I have left to buy you some of them Jordans. Now, I saw you on a corner at 3 o'clock in the morning, but you try to sneak in the house and you didn't try to tell you didn't you didn't tell me anything but mm -hmm. I saw you though uh -huh. so it's just kind of like it's a tease but we've all gone through the fact of somebody lying to us unfortunately. so unfortunately yes. exactly and I just wanted to have that rock feel it just something playful something fun uh -huh. you know and uh -huh. maybe if you catch them ladies if you catch them you know <laughs> fellas put the why do you lie on you don't have to say anything just push play it sounded like you caught him by the hair. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We are going to listen to it on the radio, and then for people who are watching this online, Yay. your video will be right below it. Okay. Here we go.